the Ukrainian counterattack. One is here in Kharkiv and Lugansk region, the other one is on the south. Let's move to this one first because we have some of the success. I mean we because I'm a Ukrainian as well. So let's go to the timeline. We took Nova Kamenka fully today. It also means that Russia regrouped their forces and able to put some sort of defense line and the Ukraine army still need to put new supplies because we moved out to how many kilometers already? To almost 30 kilometers. It's quite far from the previous front lines. So we need to use the new roads. We need to demine the territory. And because of that, uh, the country attack is a little bit slow nowadays. Uh, what concerns me, my friends, is Duchana, because before I was sure that we took this part of that village, and today it appeared in a gray area. It means uh, two things, whether it was map correction or the other thing that Russian army thrown us back. But still, we are not sure who is controlling this area, because it's in a gray zone. And the town we took today is kind of important because uh, you can see that the road goes through this uh, Nova Kamenka town and that is why probably in the future we may connect our forces from two of the sides. Now the part of this road still in a gray area. As for the weather conditions, it was quite sunny for the recent three days and today weather turned rainy. If rains so will continue for like three days, uh, the ground there will turn soft and it's bad for a fanning side. Also, we try to counterattack from Mikhailov direction. I'll show you yesterday. Uh, so we took this part. It was confirmed by videos, footages. And today it's been confirmed that Russia took this part again under their control. So still not enough forces for Ukraine to perform such a great counterattack. Mikhailov direction. I'll show you yesterday. Uh, so we took this part, it was confirmed by videos, footages, and today it's been confirmed that Russia took this part again under their control. So still not enough forces for Ukraine to perform such a great counterattack as we perform here on the north part of Kherson region. From what I can see, we paused the counterattack in the south and I think next week we're going to continue with it because as usual we have the break uh, about one week, sometimes two weeks and then we start again. About the carriage bridge that was uh, blown up, still I don't have the confirmation that the railroad line is working as it was before. So it was severely damaged and Russia announced that they will launch the train and probably they launched just a test train to test this bridge. And what they opened, they opened two lines of the road. Actually, there are four lines. So they opened two lines uh, for the transport, but not heavy one, just small cars may go across this bridge, across this channel. For sure, this bridge requires repairs and how much time it will take, no one knows. So I would say that without the railroad connection, Russia lost the main supply line. What other scenarios I do expect on the south, my friends? Uh, honestly, I think we should start the counterattack in two areas, one of two areas. So I think one of them could be uh, Melitopol and Ukraine is gaining the forces near to Zaporizhia. I think one of the best scenarios for Ukraine is to cut Russian forces uh, here across uh, to Melitopol and then to go to Crimea or here. In that case, we would cut Russians from their supplies because Crimean carriage bridge is not working. Uh, so they basically cut from this part and also will be they will be cut from this part as well. Uh, we also may go here to Mariupol, to Berdansk. Uh, so the main thing is to cut Russian army over here, uh, mainly together with Crimea. Also, we may uh, do the same procedure with carriage bridge again if Russia may restore their railroad connection. Now Russia is weak because they use their military force against civilians and the main thing that Ukraine still got the massive counterattack and pushing Russians back from Ukrainian land. 
Uh, so let's move to Lugansk region because here you can see this is the Kharkiv region itself and here already is Lugansk before Russia claimed that they took all of the Lugansk region under their control but now Ukraine entered Lugansk oblast with their forces today uh, we gained some of the ground and to took uh, this part from Russia and this part as well not a big change if we say about the picture as whole but we continue to push Russians away from Lugansk area and probably we're gonna reinforce our counter attack because we need to use our time now then russia still have uh, the luck in their human resources they announced for massive mobilization and mostly they will go to fight in next months probably and that's why we need to use this time to get more ground from from russian forces however russia continued to push on some parts of the front lines here for example in bakhmut they pushed a little bit uh, closer to the city city suburbs are under russian control from the east side and the fighting is ongoing in the city itself for now they are unable to take this uh, city under their control for many uh, weeks and probably more than one month already and private military campaigns uh, Cheveka Wagner are fighting for that city can Ukraine lose the Bahamas city I think could be it could be everything it's the war my friends but we put uh, big defense lines they're very robust so russia is losing their army there because uh, because of our strong defense lines they are not overtaking bahmut city from other directions uh, i wonder why because uh, for ukrainian army for example in liman let me tell you we pushed towards liman russia was able to build defense lines and we bypassed liman from this direction and took it from the north mostly so for me it's a big mystery why russia continued to waste their forces here just go uh, going on a straight forward attacks also on the south part we have some of the advantage over here it was just just a map correction probably so we took this part uh, so his walk it was taken well before uh, but in a recent update we got this uh, part under our control other than that the situation here is without any changes about the Kerch bridge Russia claimed that Ukraine did uh, that attack uh, my friends I'm in a great doubt about it uh, because uh, everything was done as it looks from the Russian side because uh, I think that track exploded actually there are many versions uh, why and how it was done but uh, the train that was on a railroad bridge part it was standing there for a long time many hours it was at the same spot it's very very unusual because trains should cover bridges straight forward so I'm sure it wasn't the coincidence and I think personally my idea that the track exploded the driver was unaware of what uh, he was carrying and explosion was put in that track by the Russian side and it is idea of the one of the branches of the russian intelligence services there is a big conflict now in russia between military rasguardia special forces uh, intelligence services cadiros and uh, private military campaigns and putin himself russia is losing this war my friends they are retreating from the front lines and they cannot do anything with it so they need to find someone to blame uh, for this massive collapse on the front lines that is why probably one of the intelligence services performed that act and i saw the video of putin yesterday and he was like shocked a little bit <laughs> with that event in, on a carriage bridge and he said that it was attacked by ukraine and we should respond in the same way so today they launched rockets towards ukraine killing many civilians 12 people lost their lives and many uh, more got injured because of the russian attack on ukraine today and one of the rockets it hit one of the main roads in the central part of the kiev let's go to the military map and here we have some of the movement in lugansk region it is today so you see this uh, gray area moved a little bit towards the russian side towards east yet ukrainian forces are far away from Kremlin, but i think we're gonna get to this 
uh, town very very soon i expect this week and also we are pushing more towards east i wonder why we stopped our massive counter attack that was uh, last week probably it's our usual strategy to pause a little bit to put new supply lines because we moved for uh, let's say how how far yeah 25 kilometers it's quite far away so without the proper logistics uh, we can mess up this operation that's why it's very important to constantly supply our forces and put new artillery systems to the front lines now let's go a little bit to the south to bahmut city where the situation is the standstill for russia actually ukrainian army start uh, some sort of the small counterattack in this area in kurdimivka let me show you the timeline so we pushed russians away a little russia still attempting to reach bahmut city but unsuccessful and they have huge losses in that area as for the south situation is a standstill no offensive action from either of the side however the fighting continues russians regroup their forces put reinforcements from Kherson itself and ukraine should put new supply lines again and put more artillery systems to continue the counterattack on here so probably we're gonna go from this direction and from this one as well situation on the north so well uh, we got the information that belarusian forces concentrated around six battalion tactical groups which is roughly six thousand soldiers also we got the information that russia russian forces were sent uh, to the border with ukraine also russians say that they uh, sent mobilized soldiers around 15,000 uh, mobilized uh, men also to belarusia where they will be positioned so far we don't know but belarusia continued to send their weaponry to russian side so actually tanks were taken from belarusia uh, recently around 30 tanks uh, t-72 tanks were delivered to the russian side so that is why i do not expect that belarusia will openly enter this conflict invading this part of ukraine the same conclusion i read in article of the institute of the war researches they say that it's highly unlikely that belarusia enters this conflict in nearby future however still they position the threat for ukraine that is why we should uh, keep our forces very close to belarusian border and today it was the g7 urgent meeting and president zelensky was uh, there by online and he asked our western allies to provide some kind of peacekeeping operation in that area and that may help ukraine to release the forces to fight against russians because yes we have the big army but it's dispersed across the front lines and also we should keep lots of our forces here in this area to avoid uh, the risk of being attacked as it was in february uh, this year after russian rocket attack on ukraine recently we got some problems with electricity and today it's been confirmed that the kiev region is totally restored so all of the facilities are working fine for the power supply and will not have any problems with that any longer Longer? well at least for now and also i heard the same information for the other regions that suffered russian rocket attacks recently and russia spent almost 700 million dollars on the one day attack and we were able to restore our electrical supply in just two days in their propaganda media they say that we have total blackout in ukraine that we are freezing out in cold well russia financial times say that the russian tech exposed weakness of the ukrainians defense i wouldn't say so because we shut down 50 percent of the russian rockets but partially i still would agree with this article because we were forced to move our air defense more closer to the front lines to protect our forces over there that is why yes we need more of the anti-aircraft and anti-rocket systems to be delivered to ukraine germany will give ukraine 16 of the self-propelled artillery systems to zana which are slovakian made and it's great russian nuclear strike would almost certainly draw physical response nato officials said we have this information from reuters yes i think it's the proper way to do it we need to send messages to putin that he's a dead man in case he would use nuclear weapons in ukraine or elsewhere and nato also said about the possible belarusian attack for now they don't see the signs that belarusia is prepared for that attack ukrainian army is going on a counterattack 
attack. So it was uh, the day before yesterday here near to Kupensk and last night we covered quite a lot of kilometers to reach Mykolaivka. As you can see, we already took this part of the road under Ukrainian control. Yes, it's in a gray area mostly, but the fighting is ongoing here and Russia is not controlling this highway anymore. This highway is quite important because it leads to Svatova city and I do expect that this week we're gonna get closer to the city. We have the natural obstacle, the river in the city itself, but I think it's not a great obstacle for Ukrainian side. Russians are trying to build a new defense line nowadays and that will obviously slow down our counterattack. Still, we have major forces here in this area. We are waiting also for the reinforcements and for more artillery and then we're gonna continue our counterattack. Let's go to Kherson region. For now, Ukrainian forces still on pause over here. We're gonna see in the future. I expect massive counterattack in this area as well. And as I say to you, the good side from Ukraine would be the attack on Melitopol. So Melitopol is over here. Just yesterday, this Russian-controlled airfield was attacked by our rocket artillery systems. And I think the good way for Ukrainian forces will be just to go here and cut Russians all across to Crimea. That is how we're gonna cut them from all of the supplies. Without the carriage bridge, this area will be just without proper supply. As for the north part of Ukraine, Belarusian side over here confirmed that they will gather 120,000 soldiers, I think near to Ukrainian border. So it's the threat uh, for Ukraine, obviously. That is why we need to keep our forces near to the Belarusian border. But whether they will go to full invasion of Ukraine, I'm in a great doubt about it. Still, Belarusia sends their tanks and armored vehicles to Russian side. So I don't know why they will attack without those tanks. Still, they have armored vehicles, but but they need a lot because if you remember Russia attack Kiev from this side with more than 100,000 troops with modern tanks and other stuff and they all vanished here. Well partially retreated, regrouped as the Russian side says but for Belarusian uh, leader it would be suicide mission because he doesn't have support in his own country. So this worrying still exists and we need to keep our forces ready for the possible invasion from the north side from Belarusian side by Belarusian forces Forces, but uh, I would say the probability is quite low for that scenario. The main thing for Ukraine that we already passed this river over here and it's the open field for our tactical and strategic uh, counterattack or counteroffensive operation. Bakhmut city there is no any change for today and Russia continued to push towards the city but Ukrainian defense is very strong in this area. It is the only place where Russia tries to get some of the land. Bad news for Ukrainian air forces. Today we lost Su-24. It was shut down probably by the Russian missile near to Poltava. So it crashed. Uh, the pilots were ejected but one of the pilots lost his life. Also, we got the report from yesterday that we lost one more jet. Uh, the pilot shut down many of the cruise missiles and drones and somehow lost the control of the airplane and ejected. So that pilot survived. That accident happened in central part of Ukraine near to Vinitsa. And I don't know what happened to that airplane. So for two uh, consecutive days, we lost two of the jets. It's very bad because we are in luck of the military airplanes. Russia has depleted large part of precision ammunition, NATO officials said. And now Russia has around 2000 precise missiles as cruise missiles calibers that they use to fire from the ships or they have different Soviet made uh, rockets that are quite precise and they fire them from the airplanes, strategic bombers like Tupolev 295. But before this war, they got more than 6,000 of those rockets. Now they have two. And they simply cannot waste all of them because they need them to protect Russia itself. But still we have the warning for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day of Ukrainian defender, the 14th of October. We celebrate the day and probably Russia may fire their rockets 
to target Ukrainian infrastructure again. At least we got this warning from our intelligence. Today, Russia launched more than 10 rockets. Most of them were intercepted by our air defense, but some went to some of the military infrastructure. Ukrainian forces continue to capture more land on the northern part of the Kharkiv region, and soon we're gonna go to Lugansk region. Svatova is under the big threat of being freed from Russian occupiers. Big threat for Russians, obviously. We are moving a little bit forward. You can see this area over here turned blue. Blue, it means it's confirmed taken by Ukrainian forces. There are no Russians here in this gray area. There could be Russian forces still, and the fight is continue across these front lines. However, Russia continued to push on the south from Bahmut. So Bahmut city is very important, strategic place, and they start to push over here. And after Zaitseve, they took this Mayorska village. Uh, sorry, uh, they didn't take uh, this Mayorska village. They are very close to it. The fighting is ongoing. However, the village is very small, so I think it will be taken by Russian forces very soon. Near to the Bahmut, there is no any movement for the recent days. Ukraine defense line is very robust over there. As for the south, my friends, there is no movement, so our counterattack stopped a little bit. However, we continue to use artillery, we continue to fight towards the Russian side, and I think that Russians will be forced to leave Kherson city very soon. Just yesterday, Russian side announced the evacuation of civilians, and not only from this part. So we do expect that they would flee from this uh, territory because it's hard to provide supplies for the forces and it was a trick done by Ukrainian army. We were much smarter and we were talking about this massive counterattack that should be in Kherson and Russia sent more forces to this area. We cut all of the supply lines and they are now without supplies. As simple as that. So if they will continue to stay there for a long time, they will be just devastated and it's just a matter of time then Ukraine will take this land and Russians probably already decided to get away from here soon and save their forces as they usually say good will gesture so I bet like 80% that they will go out of here soon very soon maybe even next week because I see how they prepare this act in Russian propaganda media and how their officials in here soon say about it if we go on the north over here Russia pushed towards our side Russia is controlling this one so we are still far away I would say from Lysychev but in future we're gonna push towards this place and free this uh, area from the Russian occupiers. Let's go here to the Kerch Bridge. You know that it was severely damaged and the Russian side, also Russian media say that they need many months to repair that bridge. Awesome news for Ukrainian side, however we don't know what part it will take such a long time to repair uh, the standard road or railroad because the most important for russian forces is to use the railroad connection as for the north part of ukraine near to the belarusian border today belarusian side announced that they will collect lots of the forces in belarusian side around 120 000 soldiers most of them should be Belarusians and around 20,000 Russian soldiers. So it's going to be some sort of the joint army. And still, I would say that the possibility of the Belarusian attack on the north is quite low. However, we need to expect everything. And in case they would dare to attack Ukraine, it would be the political end or maybe physical end of the Lukashenko. Ukrainian forces are advancing on the north from Kupensk position. Well, we are advancing towards the eastern part, uh, but everything is happening on the north part of Ukraine. Today we moved and we took under control uh, this village over here, Pishchane, and we took already H26 road, which is very important for the Russian supplies. This road leads to Svatova, so Russia cannot use this uh, way any longer. The only road that they can use for Svatova is uh, this one. This is uh, P66 road. Yet Ukrainian forces are far away from Svatova, but we can use artillery systems to target Russians' positions in that 
hub city. Russia still uses it as the main supply hub for their forces in this region, so it's very important for Ukrainian forces to get this one under control. I expected that we will take it this week, so I was wrong, my friends. I guess Ukrainian army still needs uh, some of the new resources to continue counterattack in this area. Russia continues uh, their attacks, however, and they broke from Donetsk region. As you can see, they took Pisky. Well, today they took all of the part of the Donetsk airfield. It's out of use for long. Eight years I used to fly there. Fantastic airport as it was before. Now those are uh, just ruins. And Russia continues to advance near to Bahmut on the south part of it somewhere here no big changes near to the bahmut today i got the reports from the russian publics and telegram channels saying that they already took bahmut but later on uh, this was uh, recognized as fake they didn't go to the city so far and as for nearby future i don't think that they will go to the city and probably they may do it with the mobilized soldiers still there are lots of soldiers and they gonna attack the city, try to attack the city and take it maybe just a quantity of the russian mobilized soldiers may prevail over the quality of our prepared soldiers on the front line I'm speaking just about Bahmut, my friends, because Russia throws all the resources to take this city. They really want it. About uh, the rest parts of the front lines, even the mobilized soldiers, my friends, they will not have success. As for Kherson, uh, the managers that Russia put there, uh, the governor and the mayor of the city, they already went out from the city to the bordering city uh, with Crimea, so they escaped to Henichensk far away from here son so this area is uh, potentially could be freed uh, by ukraine very very soon and as i said to you i give 80 percent for that in nearby future maybe one or two weeks because our media and the russian resources uh, say that the, probably russia decided to leave uh, this part of the Kherson region because their army is just trapped over there plus they announced the massive evacuation of civilians from this region uh still they have some of the supplies uh, to that area they have ferries and they have some of the bridges that they try to restore so they built a couple of the bridges across uh, th this area i showed you before in my previous videos that they got some improvised bridges but it's not enough for the group they have over there and they have also lots of the civilians and they need to provide supplies for them as well so it's hard for them to do it that's why they decided to get away from this region i think it was the military command uh, that took the decision i mean russian military command but in any case even if they would not retreat from this area we'll take it uh, this winter till the 2023 i'm almost sure about it and now let's go to the south my friends where ukraine went again on counter-attack at least I got that information, uh, but on this map you see no changes for today. However, I know that uh, we tried to attack from the Chani and from this side as well. Uh, we got that information even from our forces, our soldiers who are on the front lines. So I'm still waiting for the update. Maybe it will be released tomorrow uh, to show the current information in this area. As for the rest parts of the front lines, well, today it was Belgorod, so Russian territory were here. Uh, there was uh, the oil factory that got attacked uh, by someone, somehow, we don't know it, so it was the huge fire over there. The Russian officials based in Kherson fled that territory and now they're on their way to Crimea. It means that Russia is prepared to evacuate everyone from this area. I told you about this possible scenario this week and I think it will happen my friends and then I'm not sure about it maybe even next week Russia tried to send new reinforcements from the new mobilized soldiers but what they've done they done nothing practice showed that the new reinforcements made it even worse for Russian army in this region with a lack of training discipline and morale new mobilized soldiers start to run in in any kind of the worst scenario artillery fire or counterattack from ukrainian side 
Then experienced Russian soldiers usually stay in cover, the new soldiers start to run across the battlefield, uncovering the position of the Russian forces and actually helping Ukrainian artillery to target Russians. And this information we have from the Russian media resources. And they also tell that the management of the Russian army say that it's useless to send them to this region of Kherson and it's better to withdraw from this area to save troops because the supply lines are cut and improper supplying during the winter time may lead to catastrophe of the Russian group near to Kherson. So as I say to you, I give 80% for that scenario. And as for Kherson city, my friends, as I told you, we got the information that Russian officials are running away from Kherson to Crimea. It's a good sign and I do expect that they will go away from this part of the region. Plus, we got the speculation that Russia wants to sell this part of the territory in exchange of the ceasefire from Ukrainian side. But it's not going to happen. I'm almost sure about it because they will be driven out from this part in any case. Russia tried to go on the counterattack near to Crimea, however, unsuccessfully. And they continue to push near to the Bahmut. On the north here we have uh, Kaduravates. Uh, they are trying to get the Krasnohara village. And here we have the private military campaign Cheveka Wagner. That is a Prigozhin's, uh, the Putin's friend uh, campaign. And basically those two crazy Putin's friends are trying to get Bahmut under their control. And Putin put the goal for them to take Bahmut till the end of this month. I don't think they will be successful because uh, Ukraine was able to build defense lines near to the Bakhmut and in the city itself. So it's absolutely unreal for them right now with the resources they have to get this city. Probably they may reinforce this group with mobilized soldiers, just send them uh, with AK-47s. They may have lots of their losses and finally get the city under their control. Sergei Surovikin, the commander of the Russian army in this war against Ukraine, he said that the situation in Kherson is very terrible. All of the supplies were cut by Ukrainian army and Hamas. They always mention Hamas. And he said that they gonna probably take very hard decision. What he meant by that hard decision is that they will withdraw their forces from Kherson, my friends, and from this area on the north part of the Dnieper River. Believe me, it's going to happen very, very soon. They also say that they are evacuating all of the civilians from that part and from Kherson city. They also say that they evacuate all of the facilities like libraries, uh, cinemas, everything. So for sure, Ukraine will liberate Kherson from the Russian army. Unfortunately, if they evacuate their army, it means that we're not going to encircle them. But again, it's going to be the great victory for Ukrainian army. It was a strategic and tactical win by Ukrainian army because we cut supplies and during the winter time it's absolutely impossible to sustain such a large number of troops around 20,000 people they say in this small area that is constantly under attack of Ukrainian artillery so I was like 80% sure that Russia is going to run away now I'm 99% sure that they are gonna withdraw their forces and they're preparing their own people for that news. Russia is evacuating uh, everyone from Kherson. They still have some of the ferries and they repaired this dam. They may use it uh, for the small cars and tracks, but they cannot use that bridge for the tanks and very heavy vehicles. So that is how they are going to do it. They want to evacuate all of this area and obviously there will be many civilians who would like to stay in their homes as it was here or maybe even on the eastern part of Ukraine or near to the Kiev then evacuation was announced but people elderly people they just just decided to stay with their households because they were afraid they spent most time of their life in their households so they decided to stay there and many of them lost their lives unfortunately it was a report that the Ukrainian army started Started the counterattack near to Piatihatke and Suhanova from this side again. 
And there are some reports that Russia is moving civilians out from the city together with their troops. And we cannot use our artillery to hit that army, the Russian army, because they just covered with civilians and we are unable to use our weapons. So maybe it's the bad sign for Ukraine because it's just partially a bad sign because obviously we're gonna take Kherson in that case but Russia may move their forces to other regions and have more success for example in Donetsk because the main goal for Ukrainian army is not just to take back our territory the main goal also is to destroy and circle in prison Russian army uh, because if their army exists they may push and attack us again from different directions well russia is preparing their forces to attack the northern part of ukraine here as you can see we have lots of the forests and basically we can hide we can build the defense lines i don't know how they will go on their attacks on the northern part of ukraine this area is just flooded there are lots of lakes swamps rivers it's simply not okay for the massive attack and with the forces they have even if they would gather 170,000 troops as they want they will not be able to go to the Kiev. they will just go here to deflect our tent from the other front lines but we gathered our own army since the april we have our forces ready to meet belarusian and gather with russian forces here on the north part of ukraine so i think it's not the threat for leave Koval or Rivne, so it's not the threat for kiev just remember they try to get kiev with their forces that were regular trained ready that got some military experience in syria that got enough weapons now russia is in lack of resources and i think it's a not big threat for kiev that they would try to go to any kind of direction from the north we're gonna close them in that area and destroy as usual we're gonna drive them away there were some of the reports of the russian attack from Kermina side they tried to get more ground and they put new reinforcements and resources to that area they took some of the ground from this part however we're still controlling terni and yampolivka so two of the villages that are across this uh, lake and it's very important to keep them under our control what russia took here is nothing just fields so it's not the map clarification i think it's russian attack we were speaking about it long time ago around three days and here is the result of that country attack whether they can go across this lake and take liman no there is no chance for it let's go to bahmut area where russia continued to advance the forces more closer to the city Bakhmutska was under the artillery fire today which is the sign that they're not controlling this village just to remind you on the north side mostly Kaderwites and together with prisoners are fighting uh, prisoners from Cheveka Wagner private military campaign on the south and near to the Bakhmut mostly private military campaign is fighting for that city and they are pushing hard closer and closer they are coming towards the city however I am in a doubt that they can take this city uh, this month until they would send lots of the new reinforcements to that area and also we have of the movement some of the movement uh, on the south around here they took Odarovka village and this road which leads uh, to Bakhmut city itself so yes some movement this time from Russian side and on the south we also have the map clarification uh, we took the chani over here which is very crucial now it's confirmed that russia is still controlling this part and i think part of the duchana village as for the russian rocket attacks on civilian infrastructure they attack zaporizhia and one of their residential buildings hit dramatically there are some of the injured people and also they attack kharkiv and Kiev today uh, didn't sustain any kind of the rocket attacks. Belarusian side launched the MiG-31s that may carry hypersonic rockets. That is why today we got the air sirens all across Ukraine. But those planes didn't launch those rockets uh, to Ukrainian side. Those rockets are very fast and hardly can be recognized by our 
air radio systems that is why we have the air sirens then Belarusia or russia sends their mig 31s to patrol the area near to ukraine because sometimes they may launch those rockets russia continued to move their forces out from the northern part of Kherson region and yesterday ukraine attacked the antonovsky bridge again just to remind you russia was able to build the ferry bridge just near to antonovsky bridge and that was under attack by our forces russia claimed that we hit civilian targets however we hit that bridge during the night time which is in a curfew time so there should be no any kind of civilians by that time the new york times article says that the united states sees the opportunity for ukraine to take more ground so the next six weeks ukraine military will press forward in donbass and potentially retake Kherson. russia now eagerly start to build the defense line in Donbass probably they know something and yes we need to use this time before the mud surface just to counter attack in Kherson, Donbass, in Lugansk area so I hope that it will happen this fall. Today we had the massive attack from Russian side they fire rockets and Shahid drones. Lots of the electrical power plants together with power lines were damaged or destroyed. Our air defense worked the best way they could and in Kiev where I am now there were no any targets hit by the Russian rockets. But anyways, my friends, we have a blackout, which is obviously not good. But anyways, I'm able to film this video. So let's go for the news. Iran condemns call for United Nations probe into alleged use of the drones in Ukraine. It means that they are against the investigation that United Nations will put on Iran for using the drones in Ukraine. And Iranian officials say that they would react strongly uh, to those allegations of using their drones in Ukraine. However, we all know that Iran sends those drones to Russia and it's been confirmed that they lost 10 instructors in Ukraine. Also partially it was confirmed by the Russian officials. One of the officials went to the media open air and he thought that his mic wasn't working and he said confirmation that iran sent the drone to the russian army russia is built the bridge across the antonsky bridge the bridge is constructed from the ships from the ferries and it's much more effective compared to what they were building before including pantheon bridges and now they're moving away everything facilities even i heard about the vehicles from the ambulance uh, the firefighting vehicles everything they are moving from Kherson and this area and we got the information that on the north over here they left Chkalove, uh, Vishneve and Cherivne villages so they will keep their forces near to the front lines and they would retreat firstly from this position uh, then Kherson and finally 